Okay, I think that got enough of it blank, and we're recording at 96,000 hertz. Alright, testing, testing, testing. Alright, this is stereo. I really like the mono, but maybe that was just maybe them just listening to that. So, alright, so let's start with the review. It's finally here. The review everyone's been wanting. So much so they mistook the unboxing as a review video. And now I have a polarizing likes to dislikes ratio on the unboxing video. What can I say about it? Other than what I'm showing is another one I purchased during Black Friday. It was only $7 cheaper than the lowest non-Black Friday price of $109. Therefore, I purchased it for $102. But it would appear to be a much larger saving when it was going for around $150 and up based on how unstable the price would be on Amazon. It was nearly full retail in the days approaching Black Friday, which is pretty common as that's how Black Friday works. The retailers will jack the prices up in the days nearing Black Friday and then have signs showing huge cuts in prices or percentages, knowing they are referring to the prices they had just jacked up. In the end, it's only a few dollars off, this Western digital external hard drive being such an example. With the purchase of the item being covered, let's move on to what everyone's actually been wanting, the actual review. First, the speed read and write speeds. It's not an SSD and uses USB. It is not going to be a huge jump from the last gen. I am going to go over what benchmarks I used, then get into the results. I formatted it in XFAT. It'll work on Windows and Mac, so I can test its speed on both machines. I used Crystal Disk Mark Windows, Amorphous Disk Mark, essentially a Mac version of Crystal Disk Mark, then ATTO Disk Benchmark, as I was able to find a site that had it for download. Unfortunately, no such luck for the Mac. I only found the original site and the App Store one each having their own issues. The original website would say I needed to input my email and the app store would say I needed iOS 10.13 which it would also say for the next benchmark Blackmagic Disk Speed Test common. After spending hours trying to clear enough space to download iOS 10.13 or later just trying to skip it altogether for the latest version which for some reason was allowed in the app store even though the file size was greater than what was available but for some reason it wouldn't let me download 10.13 which had a smaller file size than what was available this is why those two weren't included and jdisk mark requires commands it was too much it wasn't worth the time to figure it out as I was already using a few other benchmarks the last one being Parkdale, as this worked on both, but on the Mac, it was an unidentified developer, so I had to go to security to allow it. My goal was to use benchmark software on the PC and the Mac version of it. If there was no direct version that was compatible on both, then PC only and Mac only would be used for that part of the data. For comparing each other, not as accurate as the data where one software would work on both, but it might provide some useful information on whether the software has anything to do with benchmark and if it affects the results, whether it be more megabytes per second or less megabytes per second. And based on those numbers, maybe some kind of a statistic could be gathered, such as standard deviations to observe whether the software does influence the results. I began with running Crystal Disk Mark on Windows. The Western Digital External Drive connected with its default USB-C cable it came with out of the box, which was connected to an Anchor USB hub. Uh, I put a link here, uh, 
I'm not sponsored, uh, so I just will leave that there. If you're curious, I mean, I'm pretty sure I covered it. I know I've covered some of the other stuff, but maybe not that one. Okay, which itself was connected to a USB-C male to female Brady cable. Another link for that. Uh, this is connected to the left side of my PC to a USB 3.2 Type-C Gen 1. Uh, for some background information on Gen 1, it has a uh, 5 gig megabytes per second theoretical max. I know there's been some confusion on the difference between uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2. As previously, USB 3.2 Gen 1 was known as USB 3.1 Gen 1 and USB 3.2 Gen 2 was known as USB 3.1 Gen 2. I'm leaving out the other two versions as this is beyond the scope of this review. Here I'm going by the specs of the manufacturer which also put USB 3.2 Type C Gen 2 on the right side. That also supports DisplayPort 1.2 and power delivery of 65 watts. This is for my PC. This is important as later the cables I use to connect the external drive to the Mac are different. Why? Well, the Mac didn't have USB-C. To solve this, I used USB-C to USB-A pretty cable that came with my Corsair Virtuoso headphones, which this is also being recorded with. Then to see if the cable mattered, I used the USB-C to USB-A cable, non-braided, that came to charge my Mophie case on my iPhone. I did this as some cables don't support certain things, such as the Anchor Hub. Its USB-C port isn't a multifunction USB-C port that would be able to charge and transfer data, which goes for all the ports on the hub, essentially. Try to plug a phone charger. It'll take all the power, and if your keyboard was plugged in, it won't work anymore. This wasn't an issue as I have enough ports on my PC, but this does put limits on some setup ideas. One which is plugging an external drive to my iPhone. This can be done with using a hub that would provide enough power to the drive while still allowing transfer data results. The results were a little disappointing, but that could be another issue, such as the hard drive having the majority of its space occupied with many files, or the stock cable can't handle the transfer speed. To find this out, I'll be benchmarking the new external hard drive that is exactly the same which I purchased on Black Friday and test both with a new Gen 2 cable in the future. Shouldn't as a USB 3.2 Gen 1 is theoretical of 5 GB per second. Again, I'll be, it'll be, again, it'll be formatted in XFAT and use everything that was the same. But back to the main subject. While the megabytes per second were a bit low, I expected it to be around 100 megabytes per second to 125 megabytes per second, as others have shown, not around 70 to 80 megabytes per second. While I was running benchmarks, I decided to also run it with the with the 512 gigabytes PCIe NVMe SSD that was in my PC. Of course, it was no surprise when the read and write speeds were insane as it as it's a PCIe SSD. What was a bit of a surprise was the write speed being double for the RND 4K uh, the last one on the bottom uh, as the first three the read speed was always higher. First it was 50% greater than the right. Second it was about one third greater than the right. Then over 10% more than the write speed. But for the read speed to be about 50% of the write speed was surprising. Continuing on for the Mac equivalent, disappointing. But this is easily explained as the ports are lacking just USB 3.0. At this point I had switched the cables and it made no difference as the results were pretty much the same. What did make a difference was not using QuickTime to record as the write speeds for RND4K QD1 wasn't zero here 
but 4.35 megabytes per second. I forget at times. This is an older machine. It doesn't have the internals of my current PC. Again, I decided to might as well run the benchmark on the PCIe SSD on the Mac. Not bad. Not bad at all. Didn't expect the read to be three times faster than the write. But in benchmark numbers, it's still slower than my current PC. This might not reflect how fast it actually is though, as it still boots up faster than my PC. Having this looked into. Moving on to the next benchmark. The ATTO disk benchmark. One I hadn't heard of before, but made an effort to try out. Again, around 70 to 80 megabytes per second for the Western Digital External Drive. Now the PCIe NVMe SSD on my PC, around the same. The read speed is only about one third greater than the write speeds here. I really wish I could have run the benchmark on Mac, but no third party site seemed to have it. And the App Store would only have the iOS version of 10.13 or it will tell me it's for 10.13 and greater same reason why I couldn't run black magic disk speed test I know it's common but I couldn't run it going back to PC as this part would have run the two benchmarks that work on both PC and Mac but JDisk mark requires commands so it was skipped not included leaves Parkdale. Let's be on the Western Digital External Drive on my PC, followed by my PC's PCIe's SSD, and then the same Western Digital on Mac, followed with the Mac's PCIe's SSD. A bit more disappointing, as here both read and write speeds were around 70 megabytes per second, not even getting around 80 megabytes per second like in the other benchmarks. Now for my PC's SSD. Huh. The write speed was only 230.5 megabytes per second, and the read speed it 1095.1 megabytes per second. Why is the read speed here about five times the write speed? Anyway, let's move on to the same benchmark on Mac. Again, the ports are old, but again, the cables aren't really made for this. So of course it's disappointing with around 40 megabytes per second. Let's just check out the max SSD. Not bad. The read speed is about two thirds greater than the write speed. And here I redid the benchmark for the Western Digital External Drive and got around the same results. For the last test, I decided to transfer a file around five gigabytes to the external drive. Once done, transfer it back done on both PC and Mac. On my Mac, I kept running out of storage, so I had to finish it off with my phone. Hope it's not too great a bother. I rounded to 5 gigabytes because for some reason, later, when I viewed it on my Mac, it was over 5 gigabytes. When the original file was 4.66 gigabytes on my PC. PC to external drive. It began at 20 seconds in and finished at 1 minute 30 seconds. So it took 1 minute and 10 seconds to copy the file from my PC to the Western Digital External Hard Drive from external drive to PC. It began at 1 minute 35 seconds and finished at 2 minutes and 53 seconds. So it took 53 plus 25 seconds for 78 seconds or 1 minute and 18 seconds. Now Mac. External drive to Mac. It began at 2 seconds and finished at 2 minutes 1 second, therefore it took 1 minute and 59 seconds. Now, now here's where there's a bit more margin of error, it's 5 seconds for reaction time and the phone lag time. Approximately 1 minute 30 seconds, let's just round it to 1 minute and 40 seconds. It would be a bit closer to the time it would take from external to Mac. Based on the PC data, the computer to external seems to be faster. In the PC's case, PC to external drive was 8 seconds faster, and even with the 
potential margin of error. I know it didn't take me more than 19 seconds to begin recording with my phone when I noticed a quick time screen recording ceased. With all the results out of the way, the conclusions I draw are the following. First, I need to get better cables. This would include USB-C to USB-C and USB-C to USB-A, all with USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. Second, I have an updated Mac for a fairer comparison or at the very least switch out that 128 gigabyte stock stick for maybe 500 gigabytes as this was for mainly work purposes and wouldn't require much storage mainly to just get the updated version of Mac OS but with everything taking up more space one terabyte would be the equivalent of what 500 gigabytes was in the past third make sure the formatting was okay as I first tried to format it in XFAT on my PC and it didn't really work it wouldn't show up on Mac so I tried formatting XFAT on Mac and it did show up on PC so something wasn't working right on the PC since then not to mention the eject option doesn't really work on PC while on Mac it works perfectly fine. On PC it always says it's being used. 4. I need to start using these as backup. Uh, uh, just uh, for uh, some note right now. Uh, while I'm doing this recording I'm actually currently backing up some of my Steam uh, saves onto the external drive. I, ma I made a folder called backup and I'm currently backing stuff up as I am recording this. Uh, five, I need to hook it up to my phone. The sixth and final conclusion, it's still amazing I can edit 4K 60 frames per second from this drive. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a close and I hope uh, everyone got some useful information whether it be on tech or maybe on some other part that maybe you weren't sure that you can maybe do or just maybe how I set up this or how I collected data anyway I hope you stay tuned for more reviews soon as I know this is probably gonna be my last review before my hiatus oh uh, yeah hiatus how how could you possibly take more time off than you've been doing well uh i have some some serious work to focus on and now that some other reviews will be coming but this is something that i hope will help some people out during the holidays or something if i can get around to editing this anyway i hope i see you all in the next review and i don't know maybe comment about what i should get from amazon I know I've been I know some of the best sellers do pretty well. Um and this isn't a chat channel, but I'm still trying to provide some useful information here. And I hope it's not too bad for most people. Anyway, with that, I'll see you later. Based on the PC data, the computer to Okay power just went out. Okay, okay, I'm gonna cancel that again. The power just went out again. <laughs> it's already it already went out twice. Okay, I'm gonna cut this and probably put this in a blooper.